Hi, I'm Mike from MTF. Uh, today we're going to um, show you how to convert your uh, Fuji MK lens from the native E mount to Canon RF mount. Uh, one, once you do that, then you'll be able to use the lens on um, various Canon R mount cameras and also uh, the red Komodo. Um, so uh, the, the one thing I wanted to say before I start is um, uh, we've, we've had a lot of people um, contacting us uh, asking whether we can do the conversion uh, to the X mount version of the MK lens. Now unfortunately we, we don't at the moment. Um, the main reason is that the, the X mount lens does have some electronics. Um, so, uh, you know, that would have to be taken into account if we do a conversion. And also the other thing is I've, I've never had one. So, Fuji, if you're watching, um, please loan me a, an X-mount lens, MK lens, so I can have a look at it and uh, see how I can do a conversion uh, without destroying uh, the electronics. Okay, so uh, here we go with the conversion from E-mount to RF mount. Uh, so first thing we need to do is remove the mount, uh, lens mounts that is. <laughs> uh, so the cap comes off. Um, the the lens mount that comes with the with the lens is is an aluminium um, E mount. Uh, what we're going to do is convert it to RF mount, but we use a uh, stainless steel for our mounts. So you know there'd be a bit of a difference there. Um, so the mount is held on with basically four screws. Now they're slightly weird, uh, a slightly weird size. They're M1.7, um, and um, the the kit that we provide actually does come with um, a replacement set of those screws because the ones we use are very very slightly shorter and and have a, f a slightly smaller head. Um, so. The other thing to remember is that I mean you know you need a decent size screw, decent decent quality screwdriver, um, uh, and and the one that you need is uh, Phillips, not PosiDrive. Uh, so we use one that we get from Canon, um, but if you can't have get one of those, um, then I'd recommend a, um, a screwdriver from uh, Wearer. Uh, they make really nice tools. Um, and uh, you know they're they're a good alternative. Um, so it's four screws that hold on the E mounts, which you need to remove. Now apply a fair bit of downward pressure, and then nudge the screw round slowly if it's lock tighted in, uh, because what you don't want to do is round the heads off, because if you do that, then you'll be in a world of trouble. Um, so, uh, keep, and also keep the screws because uh, the conversion that we're going to do is, is reversible. So at some point you probably will want to go back to um, having the lens as an E-mount. So, keep the screws. Um, now the, the mount should just come off. Um, as this one does, um, but if you find that it doesn't come off easily, that's probably because um, the set there are four set screws that hold the um, well, it doesn't hold the mount in place, but they're used to centralise the mount, and those set screws are accessed through four holes around the collar, so. It's this hole here and there and there and there. Now, to uh, undo those set screws, you need a very small Allen key. Uh, I have a set here that I got from RS. Uh, and the one that you need is the second to smallest. And it's actually one millimeter. So if those set screws are holding the mount in, you can access them through those four holes. You can just about find the head and then just undo 
those and then the mount should pop off easily. Okay, so once the mount is off, um, you'll notice that there are some shims. So each lens is shimmed and whatever shims that are there should remain in place. So that's what they look like. And you'll notice that there are four holes, uh, which we will ignore because they don't seem to do anything. Um, but the, the, uh, what, what you'll notice is that there's four cutouts as well. And it's the cutouts where the fixing screws go through. So just bear that in mind when you put the shims back on. Now, because of the design of the uh, RF mounts, and to get it to sit in the correct position, um, we found that the um, the collar on the MK lens, this green collar, needs to be removed and replaced with something that we've designed to go in its place. So, to remove those this collar, there are three sc screws holding that on and they are the screws or the holes they're the larger larger holes so again with a Phillips screwdriver you remove those three screws and of course don't lose the screws because we will be needing them to put our collar back on now when we work with the lens we always have the orientation or we have the lens sitting in front of us so we've got a con consistent orientation. So I, I, I'm working from the bottom of the lens or the back of the lens. Um, there are witness lines on the left-hand side here. So if you keep them on your left, then all the parts we put on will go in the, in the correct position. So now that um, those three screws have been removed, the collar should just slide off. Keep that aside, obviously, because we may need to convert back to E-mounts at some point. Um, now, the barrel that that collar comes off of uh, is quite a precise size, uh, and the collar is, is a very precise fit. So if there is any residue of any Loctite on the barrel, um, just get a cloth with a little bit of solvent and just run it round so that the barrel is nice and clean. So our um, replacement collar is, is aluminium as opposed to the plastic on the uh, Fuji part. Um, you'll find that there's, there is a dimple on one side uh, so what we need to do is align that dimple up with the witness lines that are on the left hand side of the lens. If we do that, then we'll know that the screw holes are in roughly the right place. Using the three screws we removed earlier they go into the collar via the larger holes. And again, there's three of those. Uh, you'll, you'll need to press the collar down slightly because that holds the back focus mechanism in place. And because that's all it does, it does the, the screws don't need to be done up super tight. Right, so back to the normal orientation. Uh, now, 
the one thing that we have to do to our mount, um, I mean, as I said, our mount is stainless steel, but there is an inner part which is uh, aluminium black anodized. I call that the outer baffle. And what we've done is we've designed it so that we can pinch the inner baffle from the uh, E-mount. That's held in place with three screws. So if you undo those, Again, don't lose the screws because we're going to need that to put the baffle onto our mount. Right, okay, so once the baffle is out, you'll notice it's a really nice fit into uh, our mount and it blends in nicely with the uh, with the outer baffle so that's held on in exactly the same way actually let me just change my glasses so I can see what I'm doing so there, there are three screw holes in the back of the mount Again, they don't have to be done up super tight because the baffle is only plastic, so you don't really want to distort it. Right, so now that's on, that's looking good. Now, the next thing to do is to um, fit the mount, but before we do that, we need to put the shims back. Um, now, as I said, uh, it's the cutouts where the screws go through uh, and I find the the easiest way to fit the shim is to actually put the shim on the mount first. Line up the cutouts with the fixing holes. And if you line up the location slots of the mount, with the left hand side dimple and witness lines of the, the lens, then you'll find that the, uh, the holes should all line up. Uh, again, as I said before, uh, it's the 1.7 screws, but it's the ones that we supply that you should use. There we go. Now, the screw that's fitted to the mount nearest the uh, cutout, uh, on, on that part of the mount, there is a stop screw, which um, uh, is there to stop people um, turning the lens the wrong way when they take it out of the camera. Um, so if you find that the screw won't quite go past the stop screw I mean the screw will go through but you'll find that your screwdriver may be slightly too large 
so you may have to have the screwdriver at a slight angle and even if that doesn't work if you can't get the uh, screw to screw in if the stop screw is in the way what you can do is uh, loosen it with a small flat screwdriver Now don't take it right out because they're quite difficult to get back in but if you loosen it then you'll find that you should be able to get a purchase on the screw there we go and then screw that back on So you'll know that you've got it right when the back focus mechanism moves easily and also the macro that clicks back into place. Um, I, I might as well mention, I mean, you'd be surprised how many people don't know how to set the back focus on the lens. Um, obviously, you know, in case you don't know, back focus is there so that you can adjust the lens so it uh, holds its focus as you go through the zoom range. And to set back, back focus properly, um, you focus on something that's quite far. So you focus using the focusing ring on the lens on something that's far away, zoomed, zoomed in. Uh, and then you zoom out or to the wide ends and you adjust the back focus to get that object in focus. Lock it off, zoom to the long end, adjust the focus on the lens if necessary, zoom back to the wide end, check the back focus and make sure that that object is still in focus. So you may need to do that a couple of times, but that, that's the correct way of doing it. Uh, long end, focus the lens, lens uh, focus barrel on the lens. At the wide end, adjust the back focus on the back of the lens, not the other way around, because it's easy to get lost. Um, so once that's done, uh, the lens is ready to go. Um, the kit comes with the RF cap and that's it uh, Fuji MK lens from E mount converted to Canon RF mount thanks for watching <laughs>